Hello everybody. I wanted to respond to some of the people who've been making the comment uh, or comment similar to this, saying, "Let the revolution begin." And um, I'm sure if you've subscribed to, to channels like mine, talk about the economic collapse that's coming and that kind of thing, um, then you've probably heard that or variations of it. Um, one thing I want to say is uh, to those people, first of all, I, I, can, I can relate to that mentality. Um, and there was a time when I was younger that I would actually even say things like that. Uh, my perspective has changed quite a bit as I've gotten older, even though maybe I'm not, not that old. But I have a family. That changes a lot. But that's not the fundamental reason that, I, that I'm against that perspective now. Um, I'll explain the, the, the real reason. There's a quote by Napoleon who said uh, that in the world there's two primary forces, the mind and the sword, and in the end, the mind always wins. People misquote that because they don't read French correctly. They'll say uh, the, the spirit and the sword, but it's actually the l'esprit in, in French actually means the mind. It looks like spirit, but it's a false cognate. Um, so, it's very similar to the idea of the pen is mightier than the sword. Basically a French version of that same quote, but it makes it a little bit more clear because it's not the pen itself, obviously. The pen is just the medium. And what's behind it is the ideas. So basically what it comes down to between violence and ideas, whoever controls the ideas will win in the end. Um, and right now there's a battle of ideas going on. Whether or not people are actually fighting against each other or not, in your mind, and whether you see it as a it's an outright conflict is, is one thing. Um, but it is an outright conflict. Because there's a lot of people with a lot of money really working to control the thinking of the people of the world. And for the first time in a long time, we're actually making some progress. We're actually fighting back. We're actually gaining some ground. With this medium, with the internet, it's probably the only reason that we're gaining ground. But it'd be foolish to assume that we've won. They still hold the majority of the minds. They are still in control of the ideas of this country and of most countries in the world. So, if things were to go down right now, if we were to have another revolution, I would say it's very, very unlikely that a positive outcome would come from it. Because we don't control the dialogue right now. We are shifting the dialogue, but we don't control it. They've been very, very effective in manipulating the public's perspective for a long time. And if things go violent, they're going to control how that's viewed. And most likely, if there was a second revolution in the United States, we would end up with something far worse than we have right now if it started right now. Because people aren't ready, people aren't thinking yet. I would say even in this so-called truth movement or the so-called patriot movement, there's still a level of gullibility, there's still a level of not thinking for yourself, you know, following the herd, that even the truth movement or the patriot movement is vulnerable to our Obama. If we had someone who came and told us exactly what we wanted to hear, 
Um, I think we're ripe for it because people are getting it. They're getting specific ideas um, and running with it. They're getting, you know, oh, I've woken up. I I figured something out without getting the the core. And until that changes, we're still a herd of, of cattle that can be turned. A large percentage of us. Some of us, some of us know, you know. So my recommendation to those people who, you know, get upset, get frustrated because they can't rile up enough people to actually go into the streets with guns and actually take out the government, um, you know, go get a camera. Start making videos. Start writing. Start passing out videos if you don't know how to make videos. This is the battle right now. And just like in any war, if you mess up the initial, initial opening battles, if you make huge missteps on that level in the beginning, you can pretty much seal the fate of the rest of the war. I mean, just like the United States with Fallujah, it was the way that we handled the civilian population in Fallujah that really shifted the entire direction of the war in Iraq. And at that point, it was pretty much irreversible, but I digress. The point I'm trying to make is that you need to be fighting the war of ideas right now. The, the, the bloody war, the, the war where people are, are, are fighting in the street, trying to take back the, the government, take control, that'll come. And it's not going to be pretty when it comes. I mean, you're not going to like it. Um, and I think that that's something I think people need to realize, especially in America. In America, I think there's this tendency to be pro-war or to, you know, encourage violence without understanding what it means because it's been so long since we've seen a war on our own, on our own soil. Um, I don't think people understand that it wouldn't be a revolution like the first revolution in the United States. It would most likely be a civil war because we're not a united people. This is not a situation where we're all on one side. People would split. And that goes back to the idea that you have to shift the, the, the mentality of the people because right now the mentality of the people is not unified. Uh, there's a lot of people who would side with the government and who would take arms to defend the government. And those people might be in your family. Um, I know that there's people like that in my family. And what you would have there is a civil war. And a civil war that you probably wouldn't win. And in the end, you'd probably end up with some kind of dictator who would be brought to power to end the chaos. So, just think about it. Pick up a camera. Don't pick up a gun. Thanks, guys.